May I ask why you're doing that? Hmm? Oh, I believe in wearing a carpet out evenly. Oh, how prudent! I'm going to help! But don't you have to garden? Oh, this is more constructive. I'll help too. We must all do our share. Come on, boys. Many feet make light work. Why not, Jeffrey? It's a refreshing change. Most women lead us in circles. But I... <laughs> Go ahead, Mrs. Savage. We're behind you. But I didn't mean to start a procession. Mm, Jeff, you can take leaves. Uh, Hannibal, you can have buds. Mrs. Savage can have roses. And the rest of us will step on thorns. Do you know what we're doing, Miss Willie? Wearing out carpet evenly. Oh, someone told you! Didn't I hear the buzzer ring garden hour? I didn't hear it. I think it's broken. Fairy May, are you ashamed of yourself? Oh, I wish I were dead! <laughs> I'm afraid this is my fault, Miss Willie. I didn't feel like gardening anyhow. But Florence, you've worked so hard with your flowers. Do you want them to die? No. No, I don't want anything to die. Oh, that's so true. Florence wouldn't hurt a fly. She catches them and puts them out the windows. Flies adore her. <laughs> I think it's time we go out to the garden. Fairy, share your seeds with Mrs. Savage. Run along now. Come, Mrs. Patty. We're going to garden. Aren't you going with them? I wanted to speak to you, alone. What can I do for you? A great deal. And it might be that I can do a great deal for you. Are you about to offer me a bribe, Mrs. Savage? How did you guess? Everyone does, at first. Still, my offer is a little different. I have the money. I will give you $20,000 to leave that door open tonight. 30000 Don't you like us, Mrs. Savage? That's the most irritating response to a sound business offer, my dear. 40000 You could be free of this place, too. But I don't want to be free of it. All right. 50000 You could travel the world, see Cairo, Mandalay, the South Pacific. But I've seen Cairo, been to Mandalay, and the South Pacific. You have? I had four years as an army nurse. Still, you should be able to use $50,000. Now, where would you get $50,000, Mrs. Savage? That's a fortune. Never mind. I can get it. And, in the current idiom, 50000 is peanuts. I believe you, but I'm afraid I have to refuse. Then you leave me no choice but to burn the place down. You wouldn't do that. Oh, yes, I would. No, you wouldn't. There's too many people who wouldn't know how to save themselves. You'd think of them first. If you believe I belong here, why are you appealing to my reason? I'm not. I'm appealing to your emotions. Well, I'm going to get out of here one way or another. It's just that bribing you would have been cheaper. Now it'll cost me a couple of million at least. Is Mrs. Savage downstairs? Uh, she just this moment went out to the garden. What is her state of mind this morning? The usual pattern. She's already offered me a bribe. What did she offer you? The highest yet, 50000 The poor dear. Did she sound confident? Definitely manic, as if she still controlled her own affairs. Apparently she does. Read this. I've just been talking with her children. They're practically out of their minds themselves. The senator is leaving Washington at once. He'll pick up his sister in New York, the judge in Boston, and be here by tonight. This is the most amazing story I've ever read. When did they discover it? I gather this morning. They asked me to confine her to her room. I don't understand. How could she get away with so much money? Apparently, her husband left the entire estate to her. She's been secretly selling out control ever since. Ten million dollars. That's a typographical error, isn't it? No, they had it all right. But what could she have done with it? As her son says, heaven knows. Could she have spent it? I doubt it. Will you call her in here, please? I'd better tell her what to expect. Yes, doctor. Oh, Mrs. Savage, would you come in here, please? Dr. Emmett would like to speak with you. Are you going to place her in seclusion? Of course not, but 
Sometimes I wish there was a way of placing relations in seclusion. They're often much more trouble than patients. Do you think she knows what happened to the money? If she does, she's the only one. Could there be a method in her madness? Miss Willie, I find it harder and harder every day to find where reason ends and madness begins. For the moment, I must accept the presumptive evidence of her stepchildren. Well, from what I hear, her son's record in Congress would give any good psychiatrist a nasty turn. And the sensationalism of her daughter's six divorces doesn't speak too well for her emotional stability either. You sent for me, doctor? Yes, good morning. Miss Willie, will you help Miriam out on the switchboard? She's been deluged with calls from the papers all morning. Yes, doctor. Will you sit down, Mrs. Savage? I think I know what you're going to tell me. Do you? I see you have the morning paper. I wondered how long it would take them to find out. And you're aware of what you've done and the consequences. Oh, it's too early for consequences. May I see it? The senator phoned from Washington. We can expect him here by tonight. Indeed, we can. Well, I'm not going any place. How could you have spent $10 million without anyone knowing about it? Who says I spent it? The paper says you did. Oh, what do they know? I didn't spend it. I couldn't. I hid it. You hid it? A nice half million dollar negotiable bonds that can't be traced. Why? I don't ask you what you do with your money, doctor. I'm sorry this has happened, Mrs. Savage. I'm afraid your hidden treasure is going to prove a great disadvantage to you. That's because you're a doctor, and doctors never know the value of money. Would you like to know how long it would take me to make that much money, Mrs. Savage? Oh, excuse me. Fairy Mae wants music while she plants her seeds. Oh, just a moment, Hannibal. Uh, you are a statistician. How long would it take the average doctor to, to earn $10 million? Well, he'd have to start... He'd have to start before Christ was born. <laughs> and work right through the burning of Rome up to the burning of St. Joan and Savannah Rolla. With time out, of course, for the Norman Conquest, the Crusades, the Hundred Years' War, the Thirty Years' War, and the Seven Years' War. So we'd have to work double time through the discovery of America up to penicillin and bubblegum. But that's without deducting federal tax, state tax, city tax, school tax, luxury tax, and my personal favorite, amusement tax. You'd add about a hundred years for that. Thank you, Hannibal. It's a great deal to be responsible for, Mrs. Savage. Now, what's the doctor up to? A bit of emotional blackmail, I suspect. Hannibal, would you guess to look at me that I'm worth $10 million on the hoof? Never. The human body has only 20 cents worth of phosphorus in it, 5 cents worth of iodine, and 20 cents worth of calcium. Even at present high prices, nobody is worth over a dollar and a half. So you only value me at a dollar and a half? Never. You said worth. Your value is inestimable. Hannibal, I like you. I like you very much. You make me feel important. You make me feel like dancing. Splendid. What shall it be? Anything. I'm very good at the flight of the bumblebee. Could anything be more appropriate? The bees come home to find the honey gone. Someone is going to be stung. Play, Hannibal. Are you reading? <laughs> yes, dear.
Is it interesting? Very. I'm not disturbing you, am I? Now, whatever would make you think that? <sighs> What's the matter, Fairy May? It's just that no one has said they love me this live long day. Why, well, yes, they have, Fairy. No, they haven't. I've been waiting. I heard Florence say it at the dinner table. Did she? Did I? She said, don't eat too fast, Fairy. Was that her telling me she loved me? Of course. People say it when they say, take an umbrella, it's raining, or hurry back, or even watch out, you'll break your neck. There are hundreds of ways of wording it. You just have to listen for it, my dear. My dentist said I have perfect occlusion. Was that him telling me he loved me? What else? Why, the very first day I met my husband, I was riding horseback, you see, and he told me I had a good seat. <laughs> I knew immediately he loved me. Oh, thank you. I've been missing out on so much. Oh, my dentist loves me! <laughs> now, what else would you like for me to clear up for you? Nothing. I'm sorry I disturbed you. Thank you and forgive me. Mrs. Savage? Yes? I'm keeping score, and the boys won't help me. What's seven and five and four? Forty-nine. Mrs. Savage. It's my own system, Hannibal. I refuse to submit to the tyranny of mathematics. <laughs> then I win. I'll keep score next time. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Savage. Yes? There is one more thing you can clear up for me. What's that? Why is it suddenly <clears throat> Sunday again? when it was only Sunday yesterday. Why do you think it's Sunday, Fairy? Because Sunday is Visitor's Day. And if your family's coming to visit you, it must be Sunday. I guess I had an awfully good time this week. <laughs> it isn't Sunday, Fairy. My brood are coming back because they couldn't wait a week. But that should make you happy. It should, but it doesn't. Excuse me, don't you like them? Oh, not at all. That's a wicked thing to say. Well, we have to be wicked once in a while to get God's attention. <laughs> but, if you can, but if it consoles you, Florence, they were not mine. My husband was left with three small children. But you must have liked them when they were little. Oh, I wanted to make them my own, desperately. But they always resented me. Why, the very first time I put my arms around Lily Bell, she bit me. And she bit me every day until she was ten. That must have made you very high strung. What stopped her at the exact age of ten? I suppose at ten a girl begins to consider her teeth. But the boys, boys are always so much better. Not always. They'd been spoiled by money. And whenever I tried to correct them, they'd break something I valued to get even with me. It was a happy day when they went away to school. School must have taught them something. Yes, French. After that, whenever they came home, they spoke nothing but French, so I couldn't understand them. And I haven't understood them since. But you must be very proud of them now. The senator is quite famous, isn't he? That he is, make no mistake. I'm told he gets more threatening telegrams than any man in Congress. I believe Western Union lists him as a tangible asset. If he's so unpopular, why do the voters keep sending him back to Washington? There are no fools. It's the only way to keep him out of the state. <laughs> now, the other son's a judge, isn't he? That's a distinction. He's made it one. He has the distinction of having had more of his decisions reversed than any man in jurisprudence. 